every electionary year, politicians come to different polling units, different wards, the same different state constituency to campaign and make their promises. They make these promises based on the fact that if they are able to get you know, into power, they will deliver the dividends of democracy, bringing the social amenities of life of which in 21st century, 2023, we have surpassed those social amenities of life. We're supposed to be talking about technologies and uh, things revolving around the globe. But hell no, in a third world country like Nigeria, we still look at issues like road construction, provision of pipe borne water, as well as uh, electricity, which is something that ought to be before now. Now, the students in uh, various universities in Nigeria, you know, find themselves in a situation where four years has never been four years. For anyone who have schooled in Nigeria, both in the past and present, understand what I'm talking about. We understand how in the past administration, we had a series of strikes where the school went on holiday, you know, because they have been unable to reach an agreement with the federal government. The 2009 agreement. Now, here is Bola Metinibu during the campaign, you know, in Southwest promising the youth and the university student that four years is four years. Nobody we drop out of university because of school fees. I guarantee you that. We are too smart. We are brilliant. We are courageous. We are sharp. We are courageous. We, we made four years course. Four years course forward to December 2023, barely one year after the campaign and six months into office, the student can no longer cope with situations in the school. The school fields of most of the higher institutions in Nigeria has gone double, some triple, and people cannot even afford to go to school anymore. Remember, these politicians send their children outside the soils of this country, and they have bastardized our educational sector during their own time, they were able to acquire free education, you know, with jobs waiting for them after school. But in this our era, you find it very difficult to see that our youths will be able to even gain tangible or good education and even get jobs after, you know, schooling. After bastardizing our educational sector, our health sectors, and all manners, we have the wife of the president on Christmas Day Telling Nigerians that they should not be talking about poverty, that it affects the mental health of their children. I don't really understand. After you have wrecked the country down, you have destroyed the economy of the country, you've destroyed all the infrastructure of the country, you have literally, you know, taken what is to be used to develop the health sector, the educational sector, you know, to industrialize the country and empower the youth, you know, into buy luxurious vehicles and, you know, live a luxurious life. You are not telling the people not to talk about poverty. Fast forward to a few days ago, and we saw what happened in uh, Plateau State on Christmas Eve. And people continue to talk about the insecurity that had engulfed Nigeria between 2015 and date which has, you know, spread across the whole country, unlike in 2007 to 2011, where we witnessed only just male Boko Haram kidnapping here and there, of which it was at a minimal level. But as it stands right now, banditry is every corner of the country. Terrorism is everywhere. When you look at the situation in Plateau State that, took, that happened on the Christmas Eve, you, you would think that it's farmers' health crisis just as the government always make it look like. But this is a terrorist attack, going by what the governor of the state said. There may be a uh, seeming lapse. I think the way these uh, particular attacks were coordinated was meant to really be on a monumental scale. At a point, we had distress calls from not less than 36 communities. And even though the reinforcements, some of the reinforcements came a bit 
late, uh, we certainly the responses were able to push back these terrorists. That what we are having now, as bad as it is, we can even say it's damage limitation. In fact, going for that, we even say that the people of the state should go ahead to defend themselves. As a number one security, chief security of uh, officer of the state, if you are saying the people should defend themselves, in what means do you expect them to defend themselves? Remember, within the last eight of Muhammad Buhari, we have the governor of Benue State who continue to talk about the Benue Valley, who continue to defend the Benue Valley, who continue to talk about the Fulani herdsmen and the killing that ravaged through the Middle Belt. Now, just barely into six, uh, yes, barely six months into office of uh, Bola Tinubu's administration, another massacre happened again. And this has been a recurring pattern in the Middle Belt during Christmas or festive period. And all we could get is the chief of army staff coming out to say the Nigerian youth should stay back and stop jackpotting. Excuse you. Why do you want the Nigerian youth not to leave the country? Why do you want them to stay back in, in Nigeria? In 2020, we had one of the most fearless protests in the country that lasted for over 19 days. On the 20th day, what happened? The Nigerian army shot this indigenous of Nigeria holding and waving the flag of the country. The same people who sworn to protect the integrity of this country turn around to swallow their own children. Uh, what do you make of that? You expect such people to still remain in the country that don't protect them but kill them when they demand for justice, when they demand for equity, when they demand for sure amenities and good things, you know, to make the country move forward. You turn around to shoot them when the, the citizens wake up and say, no, we can't take this from the government anymore. You say no, but you're not telling them to fight. How do you expect them to fight? How do you want them to fight? Is it by you know, uh, sitting on social media and complaining, when they hit the street and say, no, we will not agree to this decision. You send your boys and your boys take them down. So how do you expect them to fight? Some of the response on Twitter handle, some said, just give them AK-47 and see what happened. You know, you see a drastic change in Nigeria within 48 hours. Some people said, how do you expect them not to leave the country when the country is eating them up? I think it is high time that every Nigerian youth ought to realize the fact that Nigeria is not for you. Why do I say so? It is very obvious that yes, it is possible to make good living in Nigeria. It is possible to turn things around. Just like the Labour Party candidate always said, that you can do things rightfully well, and as well in the near future, we can have Nigeria where we want it to be. But then, how long can Nigerian youth continue to wait when they keep on killing them they keep on you know neutralizing every effort they try to make in order to make a living in the country fast forward to some of the uh, high will in nigeria where you can no longer travel safely as a youth you are with laptop they tag you as a yahoo boy meanwhile we have some men who scam the whole country we have the former minister of aviation who said that the nigerian airway will kick start spend so much amount of money, but today we cannot even see that the Nigerian airway is functional. What about the 6.2 billion that was spent by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs just to, you know, train the people of Bauchi on how to repel phone? <laughs> was that not just uh, overspending? Spending so much amount of money to train? Who are those people that they trained actually? Can we brought forth those people that were trained by the Ministry? Now, the same person is trying to deny an allegation on our head now of over 37.5 billion Naira contract, of which she is claiming that she's not aware of a such contractor during her, her time in office. When you look at all this, then you ask a Nigerian youth to remain in a country. A youth who will leave Nigeria, go to somewhere far in Canada and make ends meet. When you look at Nigeria, cut across the whole country. You see them making exports. You see them doing things. You see them bringing innovation, developing other nations of the world. But when you come to Nigeria, what do you expect them? You expect them, what do you expect them to do? You expect them just to be loyal to some political uh, 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 heavyweights who don't even have a certificate, who cannot even think for themselves, 
who are even have been alleged to have forged a certificate, who are even been alleged to have forged a certificate of a school that never existed, even when uh, uh, who have forged a certificate from a school that never existed um, and submitted it pretending to be in that school when the school have not even started yet. When you have leaders who have been accused of drug trafficking, you have people who have been accused of money laundering here and there. Is it those people that you want the Nigerian youth who are clever and making impact around the globe to stay back in Nigeria or oh, hell though? Now, it is up to Nigerians to decide whether we ought to, you know, make this decision in 2027 or better still take the decision now. But then, what do you expect Nigerians to do? The chief of army staff telling Nigerians, you know, to stay back is not going to work. Most Nigerians are moving out of the country. Why? Because the country is not working. Just like many companies are folding up. That is how those who believe in this Nigeria before the 2023 election are now folding up their dream and moving out to other countries that they can, you know, utilize their talent and skill to develop those countries and develop themselves. What do you think about this? Let's have this positive conversation at the comment section. But remember, politicians don't always care about you. What they only care about is their personal interest. And that is the reason why God for the reason will never end in Nigeria. And Nigeria will remain perpetual in poverty. Thank you.